We started early. Celtic played Leicester, our intestines festered with grants and sambucas. We bit off more than we could chew. We watched the barmaid bin or the blue straws and stewed Tory stories. Tories? Stewed Tories are Freudian slut there. Our disappointed shags swung shutters for sly fags. Our wily ways met the eye of every passerby. Like a tenor kai catastrophe pouring from every pore. And in the pub, I have a hook. I don't mean a line, I mean a hook by a stool on the sunshine side of the bar and every time my glass empties the boy from Longford says vodka lemonade and I say yes please but please don't fill it up to the top too much. But that night was distinct. I was worse for wear, instinctively drawing my mahogany chair and there he sat on my stool by my hook. Supping lager tops like a fucking chip. So I explained, excuse me, that's where I keep my jacket. 37 when he spun round, I shat it all. Okay, Helen. Sexy soul market Adonis. What are the chances that we would be on it? In this shite hole on a Sunday, spitting distance from the Clyde. Well, it's the light outside and then my conscience starts. I know it's hard because I play Lego Star Wars and go veggie and lefty bars, but please, <laughs> cool. Do you want a drink? No, excuse me. I've got a kitty. Do you want somewhere to sit? I think you'll find you're actually sitting in my seat. This is my favourite song. Oh, no way. I love the Wolf Tones too. Yes, of course, I will dance with you. So we're up and the tin whistle rises to crack ceiling skies. His hands glide my shoulder with a glint in blue eyes. And I know it's a wedding ring and the wrong finger. I smell a dove soap that lingers and we flirt and we jive and I call him an old bastard and he pokes my side in the sambuca slams like poetry does and I promise myself I'll not kick up a fuss but for stomachs and knots and knots and knots we do knots but I must so we're outside and it's cold and he's got those cigarettes with the buttons that make them menthol so I'm sold and his kiss sways a tobacco soaked an aniseed stick I pull away quick and he whispers I would love to fuck you, but I've got somewhere to be. Give me your number, I'll text you round three. Aye, right! Then you're away from your wife and my mate's kitten on the couch and she'll give me strife. And what would Andrea Dworkin say? Because suddenly I'm conscious of the patriarchy, sexist commodity, being careful not to hand over my bodily autonomy, because this right here is an archaic social contract, right, for rejection. But in my imagination, the weight of his bones my flesh feels like perfection, a pause to build up suitable tensions. I blank out my smile, I collect my thoughts cause fuck knows my libido is wrong more often than not. And alas, I draw and I say, 0725825. I do try, but I'm off a shit feminist anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! Go, small child, go! I want you to kind of keep that clip going for a first act tonight. She has the absolute original goddess of the Glasgow spoken word scene. One half a song at you. She's a fantastic cat hit bum! Stop playing with the money. Just keep it in there. Watch him. <laughs> Hi, gang. Hey, cat. This is a first for me. I've never performed poetry in Bianca from EastEnders jacket. <laughs> And I've never performed poetry in such a small space. I can see the whites of all of your eyes. Okay, the first poem I'm going to do is called Last Night. It's the morning after the night before. Last night we had conversation after conversation. Tangents led us down exciting rabbit holes. Jubilation, then fornication, and now 
Now we are here. Now the chat feels as stale as the overcrowded ashtray on the floor. The air swimming with a gaping awkward silence and the stench of supermarket own brand beer. Last night, we kissed in flickering candlelight and the glow from your PC. There was no awkward daylight assaulting us through unwashed windows and chipped cheap Ikea blinds. Last night was all flirty looks and favourite books. There was no hangover breath or matted hair, no edgy stolen stares. Damn, I wish I'd worn my good underwear. Our unfamiliar fingers struggle to find comfort in the grasp of one another's clammy limbs. We are odd jigsaw pieces, too rough to figure out the puzzle. We quickly give up on our forced and uncomfortable cuddle. Last night, you were my best friend. This morning, you're a stranger. My eyes dart around for my discarded clothing. It's buckaroo to every corner of the room, all crumpled and dirty. My dress has curry sauce all down it. Is this how it feels to be fabulous and dirty? <laughs> One of us makes a half-arsed excuse about being late for work, I try, making a quick quip, but my joke falls flat. You gub a painkiller and fail to muster a smirk. I must get out of here. As I get my shit together, I accidentally stand on your cat's tail. I shout, fuck, I'm sorry, as Boo lets out a wail. Yes, that is the cat's real name. <laughs> There's a slight delay as I look for my jacket. I glance in your mirror. Jeez, I'm looking pure hackett. We rush a habitual goodbye. You think it's a hug. I think it's a kiss. We meet in the middle with an awkward high five. You mumble that you'll give me a text or a call when we both know that really doesn't matter at all. I exit with stealth and click the front door. Feel happy as Larry to get away from such a bore. Sorry, but he kept talking about cricket. <laughs> now my primary concern is the location of the nearest place that I can get my paws on a greasy steak bake. But it soon becomes apparent that my hangover breakfast will have to wait because now I'm stuck in your porch in a space one metre squared. My phone's ran out of battery. I wasn't prepared. I bang and I shout and I scream, but it's all done in vain because you've gone back to sleep. So, I count the tiles by my feet, stand there bored and alone, and wait for three and a half miserable hours until your flatmate comes home. Aww. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. there's, there's body heat, there's body heat in here. I'm going to take this off. <laughs> Oh, I'm gonna try. Maybe it's gonna be stuck on me for like hours. I'm just gonna leave it on. Yeah. I'm just gonna leave it on. I'll be nice and toasty. Okay, this one's called I Don't Miss You. It's brand new. Uh, I think you're the first audience to hear it, apart from Ooh. my neighbours who might hear me like shouting it. Uh, so it's called I Don't Miss You. Does it, by the way, is this helping me talking into this or can I just do this? Is it the same? If it's. Mike, Mike's there, okay. Now you're not here. I can wear my ugly granny socks and read trashy books in our, in my bed. I can get crumbs everywhere, nibbling on toast with hunters of butter made from brown bread. My head can rest right in the middle of the two pillows. Every side is my side. I can starfish and you are not there to keep me awake with your snores. Now I'm not getting bored, out of my mind watching football, not pretending that I care when your team wins. I have more time for all of my hobbies. I joined the gym, I'm getting slim. It's not the breakup diet, I swear. I got a new piercing, I dyed my hair. I tell myself, I'm just better off without him. I don't miss your smell. And how you like to use women's shower gel, you big coconut and jasmine infused prick. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't miss your coo's lick. And those lines by your mouth that appear when you make a sarcastic joke. And the way you used to stroke behind my ears. I don't miss listening to Fortet and eating fish finger butty sitting on your tattered couch laughing at conspiracy theory documentaries. But maybe we're wrong. 
Maybe the earth is flat. 9-11 was an inside job. Nobody landed on the moon. Elvis is still alive. Maybe I do miss you. There is a void. In all of my thoughts, in most situations, every conversation, a missing space, a black hole. I don't know how to just be only me. I would like to believe if man can walk on the moon, then this 20-something-year-old can get over him and sleep happily in a bed full of brown toast crumbs, reading Z Lister's autobiographies as if they had the depth of war and peace, with cosy feet, filling that empty space with my limbs, hearing only my breath in and out, now that you're not here. Thank you. Yeah! <laughs> Okay. okay, this one um, is an old one, but I've only performed it once before, so hopefully it's new to all of you. And it's called I Have the Best Boyfriend in the World. Stuff that doesn't sound like anything you've done before. <laughs> yeah. I have the best boyfriend in the world. I am such a lucky girl. He takes me for meals at swanky restaurants. He always insists on footing the bill. I take pictures of all the things he buys me, designer handbags, jewellery, plates of Michelin star food, post them right across social media using the hashtag boy done good. I have the best boyfriend in the world. He's the smartest person I know. Sometimes that makes me feel a bit stupid, but it's not his fault he's so in the know. Other women get jealous when we're out together. Sometimes he flirts with them, but I don't mind. Nothing's wrong with a smile and a blather. And a blather. It's a small price to pay when your partner is so kind. I have the best boyfriend in the world. We love going out to bars and having a good time. He likes a drink, but so do I. I can get a bit rowdy after a few glasses of wine. Sometimes he drinks so much he can't remember anything that he did the night before points at fingerprint bruises on my arms and asks, where did they come from? I don't bother telling him that he's too heavy-handed. I've experienced the risks of being candid. It's a small price to pay when your partner's so passionate. I have the best boyfriend in the world, but sometimes the bruises are bigger than fingertips. Sometimes they are the size of his fist, though never in places I can't cover up. So there's no need for me to show them at work. I can smile by the coffee machine and get involved in office gossip. Did Gemma get a boob job? Did Mark get off with Robbie? If I think about these things, then I don't have to think about him or admit that anything is wrong. It's a small price to pay when your partner's so strong. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. Okay. Um, this one is called I Want the Instagram Life. I think it's my second last one. Uh, yeah, thanks for having me, guys. I co run a night, as Victoria said, called Sonic Youth. Check us out. We're on once a month, every third Wednesday, uh, at Drygate Brewery. So, this is called I Want the Instagram Life. I want the Instagram Life. I want my existence to be served to the world in small, bite sized squares. I want to turn heads with on-trend threads, on the fleek Yeezy sneaks and paying new season Adidas sweats. I want boss acrylic nails to prop up chic cigarettes. I want to show quick clips and tip bits and boomerangs of glasses of champagne clinking. I want to use a hashtag to convey exactly what I'm thinking. I want symmetrical white teeth and Kardashian lips. I want a zero-size waist and guitar-shaped hips. I want round, big tits. I want a notable absence of flesh between my upper thighs and shiny holiday hot dog legs on a golden sandy beach. I want skin like a fucking peach. I want to do my makeup in front of the world. I want to be known as the contouring girl. I want to look so airbrushed that I don't look human. Not a poor in sight, even when you zoom in. I want to show that I'm sexy, smart and sweet from a filtered photo that I put up of my feet. I want to lounge on Egyptian cotton sheets. 
I want organic breakfast in bed with a topless tattooed man. Avocado toast on soda bread, freshly ground coffee, artisan. I want a meticulous personal trainer and sessions at the gym. I want ridiculous yoga poses so that I can impress him. I want a French bulldog with a feminist name. I want selfies on my bum with none of the shame. Striker pose, zero fucks given, squad goals, healthy living. I want sunrise, mountain hikes, cycle trips on vintage bikes. I want books that make me look smart. I want art. I want all of the art. I want, 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 I want followers, 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 I want likes, 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 I want likes. I want the Instagram life. Thank you. Okay, thank you everyone. Uh, this is brand spanking new, Whoa. and I actually need your help in naming it. So, it's got two working titles. The first one is called Common Room, okay? And the second uh, title that it could be is called Cox on Walls. So, when I finish, I'm going to ask uh, by show of hands, or maybe like a cheer or whatever, which one do you think? <laughs> I think I know in my heart what it's meant to be, but... So, in my high school yearbook, I was voted the person most likely to launch a one-woman revolt against Mr. McGregor. That was my head teacher. I may have sent him one or two politically charged letters over the years, and I demanded a meeting with him every time he made a decision that I didn't like. As you can all imagine, I was not one of the popular girls. Tightening on uniform rules, I wrote Mr. McGregor a letter. Prelims before Christmas, I wrote Mr. McGregor a letter. Vending machine price rises, I wrote Mr. McGregor a letter. Using our free periods to learn life skills. Well, I actually ended up taking a pottery class and I quite liked it. So, when Mr. McGregor announced that when we got to sixth year, we would be denied a common room. Does everyone know what a common room is? Yeah. It's like a room where you all hang about. Uh, so we got told that we weren't allowed one. I requested a formal meeting with him in writing. He informed me that the previous final year students had ruined it for the rest of us. He then described with contained rage how they had trashed the room, cracked windows, chewing gum everywhere, but most notably, a giant penis with semen spurting out of it. <laughs> So basically, some pupil that fancied themselves a bit of an artiste had scrawled the phallus on the side of the common room wall. Uh, it was a straw that broke the camel's back. Because of some twat to drawn an exaggerated male, ap male appendage, an entire year was denied a nice space in which to congregate. Now, I don't know about you, but this situation reminds me of planet Earth. Except instead of a common room, it's, well, the world. And instead of a big ejaculating cock created from permanent marker, it's, well, all the awful stuff us humans are doing. So plastic bags are choking sea life, overflowing landfills are rife. Now animals are being denied rights by the very people we voted in to protect us. And by we, I definitely do not mean me, but I know that I'm still guilty. We are using this planet like those naughty six years abused that room, dropping bombs like they are small pebbles hitting off dirty windows, spilling oil like a can of ginger in a puddle, wasting food as if it were penny chews stuck on couches, spreading toxic chemicals with the nonchalance, nonchalance, nonchalance of sticking chuggy under a desk. We are a virus. We are pests. Now, I don't have a quick-witted solution to this disastrous problem. I just thought I would share with you this analogy. Uh, maybe some of us will think twice before tearing our way through finite resources, littering our streets, chucking plastic away, or voting conservative, conservative again. Let's stop drawing cocks on walls. Think about the people that are going to be here after us, because we should want to leave a nice space for them all. Thank you. Yeah. So yeah, my name's Kat Hepburn. Uh, enjoy the rest of your night and thanks for being a wonderful audience.
Yeah. All right, guys. That was our first act, Cat Hepburn. Please put your hands together for cats. Yes. Make noise, make noise. Show that you're alive. Living organisms. All right, we're going to take a five minute break so people can have cigarettes and go and get more booze if they so choose. And then we'll be right back with our headliner. So do your thing.